the regular session of the Asbury Park City uh, Council meeting of May 27th. Um, as to comply with the Open Public Meeting Act, Chapter 231, Public Law 1975, adequate notice of this meeting has been provided in the following manner. The annual notice was forwarded to the Asbury Park Press, the Coast to the Star Ledger, on January 2nd, 2015, and posted on a bulletin board the same date. All notices are on file with the city clerk. Right now, uh, we will uh, I will entertain a motion to open the meeting to the public. Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Okay. The public is expected to conduct themselves in a proper manner. Any derogatory, abusive, or threatening statements will not be permitted. The chair will immediately rule such conduct out of order and after appropriate warning may terminate any further comments from the speaker. I will ask that any speakers please state your name, spell your last name, and provide your address for the record, and you have a three-minute time limit. Okay. Lori Ross, R-O-S-S -S as in Sam, um, speaking on behalf of the West Side Community Center at 115 DeWitt Avenue in Asbury Park. I'm looking forward to first meeting with the mayor and the council member with regards to partnering and collaboration with the West Side Community Center. I want to just note for the record that I did attend the capers for 2014 last Tuesday. And I will say this, I was very impressed that there were no police officers in, in attendance. Um, although I was very disappointed in the fact that very few questions, if any, were answered with regards to how the city spent its 2014 Community Development Block Grant funds. In particular, I do not think that the council knows this, but the city gave a for-profit business Community Development Block Grant funds. And it was certainly inappropriate. It's in an air, the care on the square. It's, in a, it's owned by a single person. And it's certainly not in a targeted area. It doesn't meet the definitions for the funding. It was for an air conditioner. Now, I will tell you that the West Side Community Center is in the heart of the targeted area. I will tell you that the gym has air conditioning. However, our main building doesn't. That's a nice to have luxury item. It's not necessarily a requirement. We serve very low to moderate income individuals. Again, that expenditure of HUD money was inappropriate and will probably be subject to being paid back. Uh, again, your community develop, development director was not there. We were given some contrary information than what Mr. Nuccio was given. A little disappointed not to see him there. Um, it's clear and convincing to me that there is very little, if no, oversight. Also regarding the prior year's funding, you can't blame a committee or a council member <coughs> that may be on a committee for whether or not HUD guidelines are um, followed, adhered to. You have to have professional staff that are not only capable, but willing to do the job. HUD doesn't want to see the city lose money. They will work with the appropriate professional to do so. But I want to know what the city manager and the council are going to do about this inappropriate use of HUD funds to a for-profit business in the Central Business District. So the, it, it, it's, it's for an air conditioner. Done, you are. Oh yeah, no, I'm, I'm done. Thank I you. Into, I heard about this and I looked into it. All right, and uh, I do have information I'd be willing to share with you. All right, after the meeting regarding this. All right, about the uh, condition that led to. All right, the, doesn't uh, fit. All right, the air I've got the reg. All right. Yeah, I have, have it here too. I'd be more than happy to talk to you after the meeting about that. I do have the regs, but it's not as important for me to know. It's important for the public and most importantly, the city council. It's not about the West Side Community Center. It's not about the board. It's not about, it's about the community knowing how these federal funds are spent so that you won't be faced with paying 151 plus from 2011 or the other money that you have that you're not spending on a timely basis, it's about the public having a right to know. And I am shocked and pretty disgusted that your community development director didn't even bother to show up. But again, glad no police officers were there. Thank you, Lori. And Tony will talk to you after the meeting. Thank you. How are you doing? 
<laughs> Hi, Rita Moreno. Um, at last night's meeting, I missed the first part of it, and it was about comp time. Could you explain that to us? That's one of the questions. The other question is, I don't think we have all these. Is this a salary ordinance for every city employee in this packet? I mean, I don't think we're in New York City here. There's four pages of employees. Uh, that's my second question. And uh, my third question is, in the, uh, I didn't think of it last night, but when you're doing the code on the, uh, uh, the, the, in the code book that you're doing, is that gonna be introduced tonight? I couldn't read all this in a short time. But um, in the code book, I was wondering what employees are in it, if any, and is the council in it, in the code book, about how many council members, how long they serve, and all that. And those are my questions. Comp time. Oh, Very well, important. Let, can I do the code first, just because that's me, and that'll take me 10 seconds to answer. Right. The council's in it, the terms, the way the election goes, and specifically the change of the form of governments in it. If I miss anything, um, correct me. So it isn't, it isn't, Fred Raffetto's job isn't in the code. The director of so social services is in the code. So when you say our, there are jobs and job descriptions in the code that yeah. we have spent some time tweaking. We have broken up jobs into two. We've eliminated jobs, we've added jobs. But there are not specific people. There are director, typist, I, you know, it's hard. It, it, I mean, is that a, does that answer your question, Rita? Yeah, I guess. Okay. Uh, the other thing I wanted to say is. Oh, to, oh, 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 wait, wait. You're done. Okay. Code. Time. Go ahead. Comp as time. As far as the comp time, I comp was announced last night. All right, was that I've asked each one of the department heads to assure, all right, that they begin to look at their departments, all right, and they begin to reduce the comp time hours in their department, bringing all right, each one of their employees into compliance with their all right, prospective collective bargaining agreement. All right, that's what was announced last night. Well, are you going to get it down to zero? Oh, we're going to reduce it down to all right, the whatever is appropriate for the terms of all right, each of the collective bargaining agreements. Well, no, but what about the federal law that you quoted the other day? It says 240 for salary. Well, 240, what they're talking about is that all right, upon separation, all right, an employee would be eligible by uh, depending on the department and the nature of work that they're doing, would be eligible for 240 hours uh, of payment for their comp time. Right. Well, are you gonna limit, I mean, like, are you limited to like other places do? 90 days, either use it or lose it? We're bringing it down to the terms of the collective bargaining agreements, Rita. All right, we have various, all right, agreements, all right, that we have to abide by. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, as far as uh, your question about the salary ordinances, all right, what's in your, pa what uh, you have there, yeah. all right, are three, all right, diff oh, well, two different collective bargaining, agree uh, bargaining units, all right, and one is the uh, non-union employees. The reason why it's, the lists are so cumbersome is that that is all of the, all right, possible positions, all right, that we have, all right, with possibly could have within the city. All right, there isn't an employee in each one of those positions. Those are the list of possible employees that or positions that are on our salary ordinance. Okay, are you gonna eliminate some of them? The, the, the positions aren't filled. It's easier and it's cheaper and beneficial for the taxpayers to list them all at once. And down the road, three months from now, we hire uh, whatever and whatever isn't listed, we have to do a whole new resolution. So right now, from A to Z is listed, but that doesn't mean A to Z is filled. Okay, is there a resolution for the comp time? I'm sorry? Is there a resolution or an ordinance on comp time? There isn't a particular resolution. Are you talking about on the agenda for this evening? No, I'm, I'm just saying, in general, comp time, is it a resolution or an ordinance? Resolutions are prepared. All right, for comp time, 
all right, once there's a separation of employees, all right, and they'd possibly be entitled to, all right, a payout of comp time. Okay, but it's neither resolution nor an ordinance. No, comp, comp time is... No. So comp time is something somebody made up, right? It's in each individual contract. Okay, well, I hope it's going to get down to zero. I'll keep in touch. Okay. Thank you. I can just elaborate on one thing that Deputy Mayor said. Um, the city attorney position itself is it's listed it's in the city code. Just I meant Fred Raffetto is not in the code. It's I mean, specific people <laughs> aren't in the code. We have a city attorney. It's essentially, the, the code. The title's in the code. Includes, Good. Yes. Um, all of the statutory employees that the city requires to have, like the tax assessor, tax collector, mm -hmm. or the CFO. Um, and um, department heads, but every single possible hire for the city of Asbury Park is in reference specifically in the city code. We follow civil service and the requirements of the MOU with regard to anyone who's brought on board, but uh, the code is limited to basically the statutory employees and, and department heads. Thank you. <coughs> uh, excuse me, before we go on, I want to know if the mayor or the city manager, are we allowed to take pictures in here? Yes. Yes. We are. Okay. Hi, uh, Robert Francis, Tom Driver. Um, I just had a quick question uh, and a comment. One, I think you guys are doing a great job. That's just my opinion, especially about the street performers in the new ordinance tonight. Um, my question is, uh, how does the uh, three-hour uh, ordinance rule uh, takes place? So, for example, let's say I'm in a spot for two hours. Uh, an official comes up to me and says, you have to move. And I'm allowed to stay there for one more hour and then I have to move? I was just wondering if you can go in a little bit more detail with that. Uh, well, we've never done it before. So how we envision it is that a, I'm gonna use, um, I'm going to use the musicians a little less than you, and I'll give you an example as to why. Okay. So, um, hypothetically, you're there playing the drums or playing the drums. Three hours have passed, and the owner of one of the businesses says to a special officer that go back and forth all summer right. long. Madison Marquette pays them, says, listen, he's been here for three hours, and can you ask him to move 100 feet? I have a band coming out, or I'm going to be playing music, or I'm going to be doing something like that. So the public shouldn't be coming up to you. I mean, this is obviously our first year. If this doesn't work, we'll tweak it next year. Um, it should be informing a special officer who then informs you that your three hours are up, or that you know your two hours, you have another hour, and then we'd request you move 100 feet. Okay. Yeah, that's what I thought. I thought that, you know, like, same thing if you're there for an hour and then they come after you after that hour, you still have two hours to stay in that yes. spot and then you can you move. Don't ha you're not required to move until your three hours are up and if you're requested. So if, if you are never asked to move, you can stay there 10 hours. If you're asked to move, you have to move 100 feet after three hours. Okay. All right. Thank you. Sure. I appreciate it. Everybody, thanks. Thank Fred, you. am I I'm correct in everything I said, right? Yep. Thank you. Uh, Robert Wiener, 601 Madison Avenue. I just want to give a little update on the JET program, which was very successful this year. And thank you to APTV and the Asbury Park Sun and Channel 13 for giving us great coverage. It was a junior entrepreneurial training program involving 17 Asbury Park students from each of the schools. And it was so successful that Mr. Arnone of the uh, Freeholders invited all the kids down tomorrow to be honored in front of all the freeholders and council member Clayton will be representing the city council there. And the program is gonna be extended next year to 35 students. We've already met with uh, three out of the four schools and it's just another effort that we're making here to just make a difference in Asbury Park. So thanks everybody for their cooperation. Thank you. Edward Myers, 206 First Avenue, Asbury Park. As you probably know, I'm with uh, the Arts Liberation Front. This is the first chance I've gotten to read this thing, and I think a few things are missing. There's nothing in here about veterans, disabled, or seniors. There's nothing about a grace period. And I also suggested that the free culture zone be reinstated and used, uh, you're trying to take people up there by putting uh, 
food trucks up there, why not let the performers who don't have a license play at that end or people with amps as a way of drawing traffic up there? And also, will this three hour thing apply to me who sits there with a the drawing board? You have three minutes. So when you say your three minutes are up, so if you want to keep on asking questions, because no, that's what, it. I'm, you're done? Okay. I've asked. Once we start answering, there, there's no cross conversations. Say that again? Once we start answering your questions, your time has expired, so there's no more cross questions. So if you want to, you want to sure you don't want to embellish any of your questions or? Well, I'm going to answer to those questions. You just want to answer yeah, yeah. those questions? Fine, thank you. Fred, do you want to take it? Well, the, the prior council had adopted a resolution uh, a number of years ago establishing a free culture zone, what was termed a free culture zone at that time. And my recollection was it was the southern area of the boardwalk uh, from the casino going south to the Ocean Grove border. And um, there were um, less restrictions with regard to that area in an attempt to cultivate um, performers to, to that particular area of the boardwalk. Um, because there would not be any concerns about um, um, interfering with adjacent businesses. You know, you, for example, have utilized the uh, example of the drummer, for instance, who might, if the music might conflict with a, a, a band that one of the cafes along the boardwalk has, something like that. But uh, that's something that this council could consider, and we could certainly make a copy of the uh, resolution that the prior council had adopted available to all of you to consider for the future. Again, it was a specified area of the boardwalk south of, of the casino. And um, you know, the, the other issues, they were not part of the prior ordinance. Uh, we can certainly look into uh, whether any additions should be worked in. Um, but um, the provisions that the council is considering at this point are very limited. Um, it really is just a change to the committee and the period of time. And um, with regard to the question about whether someone who is uh, an artist, for instance, is going to be subject to the three-hour period, um, obviously their work is different than someone who emits noise. Um, so I don't know that you're necessarily going to have a law enforcement officer who's going to request someone who has um, a permit for that type of uh, performing to move. But if, if in fact, uh, the artist is operating under the terms of a street performer's permit, then they are subject to all of the requirements of this ordinance, and that does require, after three hours, if you are requested by a law enforcement officer to relocate, and again, it's only 100 feet, then they would have to relocate 100 feet away. Did that answer your question? Uh, no, but go on. <laughs> It doesn't, it doesn't apply. I'm not the drummer. <coughs> Nobody's offended by my stuff, you know, so. Okay, well then you should have no problems. So. <laughs> That's why I'm here. I'm trying to figure it out, man. Thank you. All right. Is that it? Yes. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, great. Hi, Mayor, Council, Staff, uh, Warder Baumgartner, uh, Fifth Avenue. That's B A U M G A R T N E R. Mm -hmm. um, I've been watching the infrastructure work with great interest over on Fifth Avenue, Berg, Kingsley, Webb Street, uh, down a block from where I live. And uh, I'm a bit concerned about a few things that I'm noticing. The streets have been seriously regraded to redirect stormwater into Sunset Lake. A trash separator has been placed on the edge of the lake at Fifth Avenue, and it collects now what appears to be the majority of the stormwater runoff from that area, which used to really run away from the lake. Now, the trash separator is great, but I'm very concerned about the increased inflow into the lake during storms because there's no place for that water to go except all the way down to the west end to the small outfall pipe that connects the Deal Lake. So my first question is, was the water volumes uh, accounted for to leave the lake? It's great putting water into the lake, but it's got to get out of there somehow. Otherwise, it's going to be overflowing. Uh, the second thing I noticed is that bump outs have been built at the corners of 5th and 
Kingsley and 4th and Kingsley. These are also referred to as curb extensions. It was my understanding that any more curb extensions were going to be denied or prohibited after the experiment at the southern end of Kingsley. Now this brings to my mind a question of process. Uh, in some casual conversations with people, uh, I was told that uh, the explanation is, well, the planning board said it was okay, so we did it. Um, I'm going to act as a public advocate right now in that there is a redevelopment plan. Great lengths were taken with public input and due course to adopt a redevelopment plan. In that plan are specific street layouts. And what was built there violates what is actually in the redevelopment plan. And it's my belief that you cannot just supersede the redevelopment plan because, oh, the planning board, you know, approved our project and it happened to be on our site plan that way. So I think there needs to be some serious discussion uh, amongst various entities, council, uh, you act as redevelopment authority, uh, perhaps your, your legal counsel need to really put a framework together as to how does one build down there? Do you build according to the plan, which I think would be the legal thing to do? Or do you just ad hoc start changing things around because, oh, the planning board said it was okay, or gee, we think it looks nicer that way, uh, which is against public policy and all, and it kind of insults all of the work that was put into the plan by the public 10 years ago. So those are my two concerns, the water infiltration and uh, the process of how things are approved down there. Thank you. Any comments? <laughs> yes, uh, ex excellent points. I can't talk to you about the water infiltration. You and I have talked about the bump outs and about the planning board and everything. We've had this discussion. You sent the entire council a very thick package today, which I started reading. And, and you're right. And you want to know something? None of us were up here in 2002 when this was done. And we were relying on our professionals. And our professionals kind of let this one slipped through the cracks and I'm just as ticked off as you are when you explained to me like and you explained it very well like this was okayed by the state this was okayed by CAFRA this was okayed by public hearings where they had hearings at be at the Berkeley be at the Paramount so this was a plan that was vetted many times by many people yet it was changed and we were misled to believe we couldn't do anything about it so I appreciate your input and Thank you. it will not happen again because you, you woke up, you woke us up and <laughs> nobody told us. I think you woke yourselves up. Thank so you. Sometimes, you know, people think just because we sit up here, we're told everything. We're not told everything. So we learn by people like you. We learn from all the volunteers and we learn and it, it's, it's, it's great to learn. And that's why, you know, you've been to my house, other people have been to my house. I have a listed phone number. I, I do not know all the answers, but I'm yeah. I, I, I'm a sponge. I'll soak everything in. So, Warner, I, I appreciate your right. input. And if anybody knows this problem or this process more than you, I'd like to meet them, except the ones that are pulling the wool over our eyes. So, uh, again, I appreciate your input, and we will be on top of it from here on out. No, and any, any way I can help, I'm more than happy. I was back in those days. I was part of creating the plan and uh, sat in a lot of meetings and have a lot of knowledge about it, so I'm, I'm grateful to uh, be taken seriously about this. Well, but uh, you, you need to amend the plan. If you want to make changes, you simply need to amend the plan, and I think that's something that's been in the works for a while, too, that's kind of uh, in it, limbo. It, it, yes, and, and we're, we're, we're in the process of doing that, but it would have been nice for somebody on our staff, I'm not talking about Fred, I'm not talking about Tony, I'm talking about our professionals to say, you know, they can't do that, but they did it. So we didn't get that advice. So we got the advice from you now, so we're going to be on top of it. Okay. Again, thank you. Right. You're welcome. And, and just your point, Warner, the, I mean, we lost the city planner, um, yes. which has been a delay. As one of the reasons the city planner is such an important position is because that potentially delays any re, any development in town, redevelopment in town, and this amendment process. So that process has been delayed by um, the unfortunate departure of Don Salmon. Yeah. Okay. Hope we can get an answer on Sunset Lake next time. Thanks. Yeah, Tony, can you uh, ask TNM? The, the thing, since TNM came on board, which I'm going to say March, we TNM has a full time inspector down there overseeing this project. That his salary is being picked up by the developer, but I, 
I think they're blowing some calls also. So we'll get on top of them and make sure that we're getting all the facts back. And I believe there's weekly meetings. And if it means I have to go and I'll take Warner with me as my consultant, I'll go to the weekly meetings to make sure we're getting told the truth. Again, thank you. Mark Clark, 1259 Washington Avenue. I've been running the basketball league for Asbury Park Rec for the last 10 years in Asbury. Well, seven years in Asbury Rec ran the league. The first two years was on my own. And the budget for the uh, youth league and adult league has always been between 15 and 17,000. For the last seven consecutive years, Asbury Park Rec gave me no problem and always funded the budget. budget. But this year, they funded the budget for the kids, which I'm appreciative of that. But I'm trying to get funding for the core group of kids between 15 and 20. You know, we play 80 games for the kids and 80 games for the older kids. Well, I get it. The older kids can probably pay for their own uniforms and things like that. But the money to take care of the referees, the people who do the score, the people who do the clock, you know, and things like that. So we hit a wall this year, and the difference is five to $7,000. And I was just trying to figure out where can we get that funding to continue the league that I've been doing for the last 10 years. That's it. Tony, would you I don't even need an answer. Y'all can just figure out, and then I can come back and see Mr. Kelly on a record or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I would suggest you, you attend the next recreation committee meeting. and We had a meeting. We had a meeting. That's where we got permission to do the funding for the youth. But we need funding for the core group of guys between 15 and 20 that, if, frankly, they should be, you know what I mean, have something to do year-round when they get out of school or whatever. You know how it goes. Yeah, so I think the, it's on the Recreation Committee meeting, which will be next week, and the process that we would go through is vet it through the committee, which would then make a recommendation to the council. Thank you very much. And you're welcome to come to that meeting. All right. You should, you should say that. Which is um, Monday. That's necessary. Monday or Tuesday. I think that's necessary. Monday at 4.30. Thank you. Oh, Mark. Oh, Let me double check. Let me just double check to be sure. Okay. I understand that. I know that. June 1st, 4 p.m. Monday. We just talked. Because he was asked to come. I said that was. Hi, I'm Gail Helfrick from 7th Avenue. I just want to uh, thank all of you up there tonight for taking the time and putting in the effort of all the activities that you were working on. It's uh, refreshing to hear that information. It's not something I think that everybody knows, and I think, um, I don't think it's, re you know, people just don't understand how much it takes, I think, to actually right this ship here in Asbury Park. So thank you for taking the time and giving us that update. Um, I did want to reiterate, I had mentioned at a former meeting, and I've spoken to Amy about it a little bit, um, but I do think that, still think that you can't do it alone, and that to the extent that we can pull volunteers from the city, I'm here to say I'd like to help you with that effort, and if there are, as you give updates each meeting, if you can identify volunteers or people with certain expertise that you need, even if it's just for an hour or two, um, I think we should try to do it, because I think there's still a lot more to be done, and but I did want to thank you for, for taking the time. Thank you. Thanks, thank you. Uh, Maureen Nevin, DLA Court. Um, hi. I just want to thank everybody for the cooperation. I mean, it's great to be able to call up the council members and, and toss out ideas, and they're actually glad to hear from you. It's really nice. Um, my question is about the lot at uh, Webb and Deer Lake Drive. It's a sizable parking lot. Um, it hasn't been used since I've moved here, since 99. Um, I have no idea, you know, what it's zoned for, but right now it has a bunch of containers up there, you know, like tractor trailers without the cabs on them, and I just wondered if the zoning allows that. It's a residential neighborhood, um, and I'd like to know who owns that property. <clears throat> Is that uh, Sackman? Is that part of that building at, uh, on the corner of Kingsley and, and DLA Drive? I-Star. Oh, I-Star owns it. So those are I-Star's uh, trailers now? Correct. And I guess, Tony, you can have Barbara look and see if those trailers could be legally parked there. 
continue to look into whether it, that meets the zoning and stuff. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Hi, Maggie Quinton from Ocean Avenue. And I just wanted to ask uh, two questions. One is if the library committee is still in place and if there is anything going on with that. I did go to try to go to a meeting and there was no meeting and I would like to see the library here be better since I came from Mercer County which has like fantastic libraries and I would love to see something like that here and the other thing is about the planning board and I just heard um, before from Werner, I think it is, say things. And I did go to the planning board meeting and I couldn't understand what their position was. And this was for the food trucks. And there was no question that they took this as restaurant. This is a restaurant. And there was no thing about bathrooms. There was no questions about, it was all done. And the only question they had was about signage. And to me, I was very uh, like surprised. I thought they would go into more in depth of, of what's needed if this was a restaurant. If you're bringing in 100 cars in the parking lot, 100 families using this, I, I would think there's ordinances of how much you should give this if there has to be handicapped bathrooms or anything like that. And to me, there was nothing about that. It was just stamped. And the only thing was about wh the big discussion was on signage. So to me, I don't know what they're supposed to do. I was just surprised about it. So that's my question. Um, the meeting that you attended, that was the third or fourth meeting that we had to address the food trucks. And we had addressed the bathrooms prior okay. to that. Mm -hmm. There will be bathrooms on site. Um, the signage was an add-on, but there will be bathrooms on site so that... But the bathrooms on site were the bathrooms that are there already. It was just that one that, truck. Correct. That's all, that was there and that yes. was, there was no thought for anything more than that, which to me, these are six <laughs> restaurants almost, and it's also now a hundred plus families possibly parking there and using this. And to me, not to think that you'd have to have something more than that. But there was no talk about it. I, even if you decided that it was fine, there was no discussion. So that's all. As I said, there had been previous yes. discussion. And part of the thought was because the location is so close to Convention Hall, those bathrooms in Convention Hall would be the backup. OK. OK, thank you. And it, it, it's on a trial basis, so uh, nobody knows what to expect. Right. But they know for them to go forward and succeed, if we see, if there's 100 families down there, and you're right, the beach bathroom is not handling the flow, and we say, hey, you got to do something better, I'm, I, I assure you, they're going to do it, or else they're not going to be in business next year. Right. So uh, we kind of have, like, you know, yes, a hammer I, I over just them. thought they would. I have talked about it more. So well, we did. We did. We did, did in-depth yes. council meetings also, where it was first we vetted it first at where they were originally going to go, and we said they didn't want to have electricity, they didn't want to have running water right. and everything. Yeah, yeah. And we said that, yep. and then when they went further north, all that was in there. So it was vetted here, and then it went to the planning board, like Yvonne said several times. And by the meeting you went to, it was just the final right. signage. It was like a stamp, yeah. Right. And as far as the library board, we heard the same complaints that uh, sometimes meetings were being canceled mm -hmm. because of the lack of quorum. At the last meeting, through the codification, we found out that there used to be seven members on the planning board. The city could have nine members on the, on library. the library board. The city could have nine, so we appointed two new members. So oh, okay. there should be no reason for <coughs> monthly meetings that occur now because of a lack of a quorum. Okay. And, uh, that that and hopefully you'll attend those because I there's will. a lot of people in Asbury Park that, that they see the potential of the library. Yep. They just want to see it take off and mm -hmm. you know get up to speed. So that would be love for you to attend that. Mm -hmm. And Don is the head of the library. Where's Don? No, there's Don. So you oh, should, you had, could. We've always had a court. We've 
never not had a meeting with the black people. Oh, really? Where did you have your last meeting? We might cancel meetings because of events or something where the library staff has, has got things to go to, but to my mouth, not that we've never canceled a meeting. With the black <coughs> well, let me ask you this. Do you have monthly meetings? We do. And at, at, at 12, month, 12 months in a year, how many of them actually meet? 12? Um, no, because sometimes they go away on seminars and things like that, so sometimes we'll pop it to the next week. So in other words, this meeting is Friday at 9 o'clock. <laughs> I apologize, and thank you. Thank so, you. Thanks, Don. Friday at 9 a.m., not p.m. Mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you, Don. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Council and Mayor Jerry Scrano Longland. Um, last night I brought up some issues that weren't in line with what you guys were talking about, and I'm sorry about that. But what I wanted to bring up again, I really need you to have a commitment that anytime you give a tax abatement, there's going to be an attachment that says we need the people, the workers, to be local residents and people that are going to work in the businesses live in town because the theory is the money circulates six times when the people live in town and work in town and you need to help the st local stores. The other thing is I went to go see Gino's store next door and he you knows I go to the meeting and he was talking about the drunks walking the streets at nighttime and it's really sad when someone has to worry about their business being terrorized by people walking around. He said he's going to answer it with cameras but I think we need more than that. He probably, we need more foot patrol at nighttime when the people are walking or leaving the bars. And that's something that we need to address. The other thing, um, I'm, I brought up, we're gonna get the copper panels back in the building. They're doing an insurance claim or something like that. What was brought up last night about that? And okay, that's done? it, thank you. You're done? Yes. The, the copper panels. Uh, We're not doing it. No, Madison but Marquette. Madison Marquette is waiting to get an official letter from the state, which they have not received yet. Uh, Carrie Turner told everybody that. And so once they get that letter, they'll be moving forward in some direction. As far as uh, Dino's or anybody, if you, anybody has a problem and they do not pick up the phone to call the police department, they're doing them a disservice and us a disservice. July 1, it used to be, now it's at August something because the, the liquor licenses are up. We cannot put restrictions on anybody's liquor license unless there's premise reports. So I mean, for somebody just to sit home and complain, oh, there's drugs walking up and down, and not call the police department so the police can log it, like, they don't come to me and complain because I cannot legally put Say, you have to put three cops there at night. Why? Because I say you have to. No, why? Because here, Deputy Chief Salerno, I've got 58 calls to this one location, then we can do it. So for people just to sit and complain and not come to meetings, you don't even have to come to meetings. Pick up the phone, make a complaint, the police will follow through, and then come renewal time, and we don't have to wait till July 1st to put premise reports and put restrictions on any liquor establishment in the city, but we're not mind readers, and no. people don't relay this information to us, we can't do a darn thing. So I would like the word to get out there if there are problems, and we do have some <coughs> establishments with problems that we will probably be taking action against. But again, unless people pick up that phone and make the complaint, the police are dead in the water, and then we're dead in the water, and we cannot do a darn thing. So I wish when you go back to Dino, you often no, I don't, I just don't go that often. I just happened to go in there today because I was waiting for you guys to get done with executive session, but that's okay. Okay, well, I'll, well, I'll stop over there and tell them more. Okay, and then okay. what about the ordinance or making an ordinance or something when you're going to do a tax abatement? It's tied in with jobs for local residents or your your employees have to live in town so a certain percentage. I'm just going to say an umbrella on that. I, I think you all have us in the spirit of what you're saying. We talk about it all the time. Joe talks about workforce development. What we are legally allowed to put in our pilot documents is something that we are requesting from our redevelopment attorney, Scotland. So the language you're using is not language we can put in these documents. So we're so just you have to just take my word that we're working on the type of language to ensure 
that local residents benefit from these construction or hotel or these no, that's, things. You got the gist of what I'm asking. Thank you very much. And we start at 6.30 now. So I, you guys come earlier because I was, we were all in the habit of coming at 6 for the old workshops. But since January, we start the workshops at 6.30. Just, I, I just it's a little time to sink in. in. Okay. So. Excuse me. Hello, my name is Vance Martin from Monroe Avenue. My concern is just that when the kids get out of school for the summer, they don't have like they, I'm not saying they don't have summer programs for these kids. Like the boys, could they have summer program, but they charge fifty dollars a week for these parents to try you know to bring these kids to these um, summer programs at the boys club. So why pay fifty dollars per week or seventy dollars a week to eat peanut butter and jelly sandwiches? They don't go nowhere. So I'm not saying they don't go nowhere as far as like go to movies or go to different parks. But it's got to be another solution for these kids in the summertime where it could be more affordable. Like bring some free programs for these parents so they could just have the kids know they don't have to pay for everything. You know what I mean? You know, it's like, why do these summer programs charge these parents so much money per week? They eat peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. This doesn't make sense. For the summer. I mean, the summer's for the kids, right? I mean, they built the uh, playground just about, uh, about two years ago off the avenue. Now, they got these parking meetings out here could probably bring in three, four million dollars, and that's the best they can do to small, small little portion of the west side is a playground, and they bring a four or five million dollars just for parking. Just break some of that money and bring it towards the west more, bring more to the west and build more to the west for these kids. That one little portion by Vidagard, by the Stephen Mavis, and that's it? What else? What, what else can they build besides that? Do more, bring more foot. It's for the kids, right? The kids are the future, right? So let's make it happen. That's all I have to say. I don't want to like, you know. Uh, before you go, uh, stop over there at the table and pick up one of the advertisements that have the summer programs on it. Okay. And you also are welcome to come to the recreational meetings. Okay. And you know me and I know you and you very so. easy can talk. Of course, you know. But you know that uh, over the few years, uh, a lot of programs has been going on. Summer programs and we have added more to the recreational programs. And it, we have more Yeah, facilities. but they have to do they have to do more. They raking all this money for the last five years of summer of tourists, over four or five million bucks, and this is what they can do. They have to do more. I mean, even though the taxes I understand paid, that the and, taxes alone is eight thousand a year of property taxes. So you know, come on, it's like come on, you guys run out of time. You're running out of gas, it's like you run out of excuses. The taxes are high, they talk about high crime, that's why they raise taxes. But these parking meters bring in four or five million dollars, and they just gonna build a little park over here. It, it, the city got to do better than that. Come on, man. Okay, but that's sad. Please, please attend the meetings, but please, we do not take in four to five million dollars a year on the well, parking. Well, it was it was the wrong. I don't know how much. Okay, that well, paid for the last five years. Our ride. budget is a public budget. You can see we're still on transitional aid. That okay. means we're still a broke city where the state is still giving us two million dollars a year, and our hands are tied. For us to hire somebody to sweep the streets or to rake the beaches for $10 an hour, we have to ask Trenton for permission because we're getting $2 million in transitional aid. We got 1.95 last year. We're going to get less this year, and that means, yeah, the taxes may go up more. They have to go up. Point blank, the taxes have to go up by Trenton until we get off of transitional aid. We're not taking in $5 million. If we're taking in $5 million we would be off transitional aid. One day I hope we are taking the five million dollars. We're making every effort to get off transitional aid. But you talk about summer programs, I think maybe maybe we're doing a poor job of telling people all the programs available year round. Yeah, but they charge for these programs. So, the, 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 that's go to the recreation committee and I believe there's also scholarships. I believe there's we, like Right, so Two, two things to, re to think about. One is we have the traditional recreation programs, and if there are families that are unable to pay those fees, have them talk to the program director and see if we can work something out. The second piece is we are also putting together uh, some uh, uh, information packet that has all the programs across the whole city for everyone in the summer, and like a number of those are free programs. So for example, there's a free surfing program that I've been doing at the beach for the last 10 years. Every Tuesday morning, you come down, you can surf. We have a family day at the beach. We work with the West Side Community Center, the Boys and Girls Club, the rec department. That's another day. The more I dig into it, 
it's less about the availability of programs and more about maybe the lack of communication. So we're going to try to do a better job okay, this year of communicating that. Absolutely, and that's where yeah. we're in agreement. If you could make that Monday a meeting, please. Four. Four. Four o'clock. Four Monday. Four. Four o'clock. Right here. City managers conference room. Second floor. Thank you. Yeah. Good evening, Bob Stevens, Third Avenue. Um, something that I've observed with all the uh, the development is predominantly on the east side, toward the walk to the ocean. Um, there's a lot of traffic, a lot of vehicular, a lot of pedestrians, a lot of bicycles. Something else that I have observed is a lot of skateboards and throughout the city, but it's just a, a popular activity for younger people. And some of these guys are older too, but uh, they're quite experienced at what they do. And as the sun sets, they can go at, at usually a pretty high rate of speed if they choose to. I don't believe there are any ordinances for skateboarding, uh, as there are for bicycles which we all see them all over the city at bicycles. I mean, whether they follow the ordinances or not, they're supposed to be following vehicular traffic laws, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, the fact that the skateboards, I don't believe, are under any kind of an ordinance, how they operate. However, it's very difficult, and I'm sure we've all experienced that. Um, quite often, you may have someone come out of nowhere at a high rate of speed, absolutely invisible. It could be, uh, I've seen near pedestrian accidents because they're zipping by, the pedestrian doesn't even see them. Um, my main uh, recommendation, though, would be some kind of an ordinance just created, uh, as bicycles, they have to have a headlight. They have to have some kind of headlight uh, for visibility, for safety. And I think that uh, there ought to be something that should apply to skateboarders as well. Right now, I think it's a free-for-all with them. They come and go in and out of streets, zipping wherever they want to go. And it, it, to me, it, it creates a, uh, a safety issue. Um, and then when you have this conglomeration of all different types of uh, traffic down on the beachfront specifically, uh, it's accidents waiting to happen. Um, I do have a recommendation, though, and uh, we're all familiar with this. You know, just on the head. I mean, that's going to be something that's going to be visible, at least for oncoming traffic or for pedestrians to see these uh, skateboarders that are traveling at, you know, precariously high rates of speed, in and out, whatever way they want to. So it's just a recommendation, but, you know, it's one more thing. And then the other thing to look at it would be enforcement, but that's, uh, you know, just a recommendation, I think, at this point. Thank you. Thank you, and uh, Thursday mornings after the council meetings, the city manager has a staff meeting with all the department heads, and I'm sure he'll bring that up with the police department tomorrow. Okay. Close. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. On to the consent agenda resolutions. All matters listed on the consent agenda are present presented collectively, collectively wow, to the City Council and will be considered for approval with one vote. These matters are considered to be routine in nature. And there will be no individual discussion of these items if discussion is desired by one or more Council members as to a particular item or item, then the item or item shall be removed from the consent agenda and considered separately. First resolution is 2015-04, approving special events wedding applications as presented on May 26, 2015. Resolution 2015-205, resolution authorizing the tax collector to cancel 2015 quarter two taxes and refund 2015 quarter one taxes for block 1205, lot 11, 130 Union Avenue, owned by Second Baptist Church. Resolution 2015-206, declaring an emergency so that a provision of Ordinance 2015-24 concerning parking may take effect immediately. And Resolution 2015-207, declaring an emergency so that the provisions of the Ordinance 2015-25 concerning parking 
Mm -hmm. No, I'm sorry. Dredging. 206 is the dredging and 205 <coughs> is the parking can take effect immediately. Do I have a motion to adopt uh, those four uh, resolutions? Move it. Second. Second. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Councilmember Warner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. <coughs> Individual resolutions. Resolution 2015-208. Resolution authorizing the payment of payroll in the amount of $843,636.75. Can I have a motion? Move it. Second. Any discussion or questions? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Councilmember Warner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2015-209, resolution authorizing payment of bills in the amount of $413,885.13. Can I have a motion? Move it. Second. Questions or comments? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Councilmember Warner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes, I have to abstain on 5 01 23 220 000 209. Okay, so noted. Resolution 2015 210, resolution authorizing the purchase of two Kabuta RTV four wheel drive utility vehicle for Department of Public Works. Can I have a motion? Move it. Second. Any questions or discussion? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Councilmember Warner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2015-211, resolution authorizing the purchase of an asphalt hot patch trailer for the Department of Public Works. Can I have a motion? Moved. Second. Any questions or comments? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Councilmember Warner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2015-212, resolution amending the temporary appropriations for 2015. May I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Any comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Councilmember Warner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2015-13, resolution awarding bid for transportation of liquid sewage sludge from Asbury Park Wastewater Treatment Facility to Passaic Valley Sewerage Commission. Can I have a motion, please? Move, Move it. it. Second. Question. Go ahead. Can we declare this an emergency? This is a resolution. Okay. okay, we don't have to? We it only applies to ordinances. So this, we can start doing this tomorrow? Immediately. And start saving the $40,000 we blew last year? Okay, thank you. Any other questions or discussions? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Councilmember Warner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2015-214, authorizing the City of Asbury Park to implement the competitive contracting process to procure vendors to operate various concessions on the beach within the City of Asbury Park. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Any questions or comments? Councilmember Clayton? No. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Councilmember Warner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2015-215, authorizing advertisement for the request of proposals for interested vendors specializing in marketing event management services to create, plan, market, and operate the 25th Asbury Park Jazz Festival to be held on June 25th and June 26, 2016 at Sunset Park. Can I have a motion? Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Just that it's fantastic that it actually showed up the week after we talked about it. We got it right done, so there's no, we won't miss yes. it for this. It won't, right? Fantastic. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Councilmember Warner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2015-216, a resolution establishing additional fees relating to special events within the city. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. <coughs> A second? Second. Yes, yeah, second. <laughs> Questions? 
question. question. So, Tony, this is the one that Joe and I are super annoyed about because we requested Tom give us an analysis on what other towns were doing. We didn't get it. I spent an hour this morning calling other towns to find out that it's all over the map. Um, so, I don't, Fred, I mean, from looking the other way to charging $500 in insurance. So, it literally is all over the map. So, I don't know how we want to proceed without some sort of, I don't want to spend my time calling again. Right? We can get this information. I'll talk to the staff tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, and I guess when we get the information, like an analysis associated with the information, so 50% of the towns do this, 25% of the towns do this, towns that have a similar waterfront that is somewhat commercial in nature, Tazbury Park do this, just so we have a little bit of a feel, so we, and maybe it's not going to make any, there's no rhyme or reason to it, but I just don't feel comfortable making this decision without that information. So I'm presuming council would like to entertain a motion to table this. Yes. Yeah, and then we would like what we requested a month ago. In between now and the next right. meeting. So we need a motion to table and a second and a vote to table. I move the table. Second. Okay. Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Council Member Warner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Okay, the table for the next meeting. Resolution 2015-217, establishing time duration of metered parking in municipal parking lot located on one municipal plaza and in the Bangs Avenue parking garage. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Questions or comments? Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Council Member Werner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2015-218, extending a temporary adoption of the new city code. Move it. Second. And as I indicated last night, the reason we're bringing this before you is is that the time period uh, for the temporary code will expire at the end of the month, this month. And um, as we're going through the ordinance process, we have a first reading, a second reading, and then there's a mandatory 30-day wait period before the new code becomes effective by statute. So this extends the duration of the temporary code, so there's no lapse. Any other questions or discussions? Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Council Member Werner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2015-219, authorizing settlement of the workman's compensation claim cashed in Charlie Lomack versus the City of Asbury Park. Have a motion, please. Move it. Second. Any comments or questions? <coughs> Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Council Member Werner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2015-220, resolution of the City of Asbury designating the 2015 menu items pursuant to certain agreement between the City and Madison Asbury Retail LLC. Can I have a motion? Move it. Second. Second. I left this resolution for all of you uh, this evening that comes out of the discussion that took place during the work session last night. Um, we incorporated the items that um, were presented uh, by uh, Carrie Turner from Madison Marquette and uh, Derek Iverson Sr. We also included an additional provision that the mayor contacted me about today um, about remaining funds um, that the council would have control over uh, earmarking where they would go. Where, where is that? I just didn't. Uh, it's under the. Uh, Okay, the last be further resolved. The last be further resolved on the second. Okay, page. and it's the forty thousand dollars. And I took it from the board meeting, so we we can still um, modify that if you feel that it needs some tweaking. Does it? Right, I see this down here. That yeah, makes sense. sense. But that last bullet point. But the last bullet point is conflicting. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll remove uh, the last bullet point up above. Correct. Yes. Uh -huh. Am I right in that? Right. Yes. Take out the word that the remaining funds, the funds in the amount of not to exceed $40,000. Right. Okay, we'll take out the word remaining. And the will be for the result. All right. Okay. Okay. With those changes? Good. Everything okay? Mm -hmm. Any other comments or questions? Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Council Member Warner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Mayor Moore? Yes. 
On to ordinances. First reading, introduction. Ordinance 2015-26, an ordinance amending section 7-36 entitled Handicap Parking of Chapter 7 entitled Traffic of the Revised General Ordinances of the City of Asbury Park, New Jersey. I have a motion to introduce this uh, ordinance 2015-26. Move it. Second. Any comments or questions? This ordinance, as you recall, authorizes the city to remove handicap mm -hmm. spaces that are no longer deemed necessary pursuant to direction of the board. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Councilmember Kendall. Yes. Councilmember Warner. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Mayor Moore. Yes. Public hearing for this ordinance is scheduled for June 24, 2015. Ordinance 2015-27, establishing a restricted parking space for the use of handicapped persons at property located at 1701 Ocean Avenue, designated as Block 4303, Lot 1, in the City of Asbury Park, amending and supplementing Section 7-36, entitled Handicap Parking of Chapter 7, Traffic of the Revised General Ordinances of the City of Asbury Park, New Jersey. May I have a motion to uh, introduce Ordinance 2015-27? Move it. Second. Any comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Councilmember Warner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Public hearing for this ordinance is scheduled for June 24, 2015. Ordinance 2015-28, amending and supplementing Chapter 7, Traffic, of the Revised General Ordinances of the City of Asbury, New Jersey. I thought we were going to pull the that. The Deputy Chief yeah. has asked to pull this. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Ordinance 2015-29, adopting the Code of Ordinances of the City of Asbury Park and the County of Monmouth, State of New Jersey. Can I have a motion to introduce Ordinance 2015-29? So moved. Second. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Councilmember Warner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Public hearing is scheduled for June 10, 2015 for this ordinance. Ordinance 2015-30, an ordinance amending and supplementing section 4-20, currently entitled Vending on the Beachfront of Chapter 4, General Licensing of the Revised General Ordinances of the City of Asbury Park, New Jersey. Can I have a motion to introduce 2015-30? Move it. Second. And this is an ordinance that I left for you this evening, and basically all we're doing on this is we're removing the expiration date. There's no other changes. It's just keeping the same ordinance that's been in effect for probably almost 10 years regarding the process for vending on the boardwalk. Um, that prior ordinance had been subject to a sunset expiration date. It had been extended by virtue of a number of subsequent ordinances and we're just taking the expiration date out because the expiration date has already passed and we want it to be effective for uh, the summer season of 2015 because it involves a process that is actually beneficial to uh, those who are seeking the opportunity to end up for Any other comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Councilmember Werner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Public hearing is scheduled for June 24, 2015. Can I request that that be June 10th, just because it's, it's for the summer season? Yes. Certainly. Ordinance 2015-31, an ordinance amending and supplementing section 30-73 entitled Supplemental Use Regulations of Chapter 30 entitled Land Development Regulations of the Revised General Ordinances of the City of Asbury Park, New Jersey, specifically relating to arcade games. May I have a motion to open, um, to introduce this ordinance, please? Move it. Second. Comments or questions? This was addressed by council at the, the prior work session uh, two weeks ago, um, following receipt of the planning board's comments on the proposal that had been drafted by our former director of planning and redevelopment, um, and council uh, made some revisions to the request that had been made by the planning board, and we worked that into the proposal that's before you this evening. Any other comments or discussion? Council member Clayton? No. Council member Kendall? No. Councilmember Warner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Motion passes by three to two. Public hearing is scheduled for June 24, 2015.
Now we're to, to second readings or public hearings of ordinances. The first one is Ordinance 2015-17, an ordinance amending and supplementing Section 4-15, entitled Street Performers of Chapter 4, entitled General Licensing of the Revised General Ordinances of the City of Asbury Park, New Jersey. Can I have a motion to open the uh, ordinance up for a public hearing? Move it. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Is there any public comment? Good job. <laughs> nah. You have to get up near to the microphone, please. Oh. <coughs> please state your name and address for the record, please. Uh, Mike Folk, uh, 200 6th Avenue, Asbury Park. I just want to know when will the new permits be available? Fred. That they're changing the, the, the fee, days, et cetera. It's 20 days after, after but publication. After publication. 20 days after publication. So for now, um, we've let it be known that no, you know, you don't have to get a permit for now and you're not going to get into right. any trouble to that until 20 days after the Okay, I just want to make one comment. Someone should inform the law enforcement officers of this. Uh, absolutely. Okay, because they had no clue. Absolutely. Thank you. Hello, Mayor, Council, Staff, uh, Warner Baumgartner, Fifth Avenue. Uh, this is an interesting ordinance. I'm going to question whether moving 100 feet is really sufficient. Now, to give you an idea of how far that is, the pavilions are roughly 200 feet apart. So imagine moving from the end of one pavilion, you're playing in front of a restaurant, and you move halfway across the open space toward the other pavilion, and you park yourself. It's about 100 feet. Think about that. Listen, Warner, I, I think you know that um, this has been a lengthy discussion about the street performing yes. ordinance. Um, this is a pilot. If it works this summer, then um, great. If we find that just getting the moving the hundred feet was was uh, you know an interesting struggle, so if this works, great. If if we find that that music still interferes with either businesses or or is some sort of an interference, we'll extend the the hundred feet next next summer. Okay. Second question about that is, who is going to determine what 100 feet is? An officer tells somebody, hey, you gotta move. Go that way 100 feet. Do they have one of those little sticks with the wheel on it, and they follow the person to shoo them along 100 feet, or do they just allow the person to pace off what they think is 100 feet? I know it's, a, I know it's an experiment. I'm just hypothetically trying to figure out like how this is going to implement itself in real life. There needs to be some measurable distance that the average person can figure out in their so head what, without what we measuring it. So what we talked about was a pavilion down. So now that I know that that's 200 feet, then th we'll work on that for next well, year. Well, that's, that's not I true. assume if you're a special that's officer, true. Werner, and you okay. tell someone to move 100 feet, I assume you have a concept of what 100 feet okay. is. Okay, all right. I'm going just, to assume that. Just asking. Okay. All right, great. Okay, Again, now. if we get complaints, we'll tweak it next year. Okay, now I noticed there were some sections in here that were bumped in the numbering, the lettering scheme, okay? And I, I have a question about why only July 4th is exempt. I was in the previous ordinance. Okay, I would like to suggest that you also consider entering Easter, which is a very large holiday down there, isn't it? Easter weekend? No. No? No. Okay. No. All right. No. Okay. Can you think of... I'm a, I'm a, can I say something? No, 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 it's my time. No. Oh, okay. No. Don't worry, I'll get up there. Point of order, no. <laughs> um, are there any other holidays that one might think of where the boardwalk is so substantially busy that it might be detrimental to have people down there? I just want to plant that thought in your head. All right? Okay. Now, on letter H, I ran across a word here inimical 
Yeah. Please define inimical. Inimical. Hang on, it's open minded. Inimical, it means against, essentially. Okay. In this day and age, it's customary to use plain English. Uh, I like learning new words, but maybe we could say hazardous to the health, safety, and welfare, or detrimental to health and safety, or maybe contrary to, but inimical, I don't think the average person has any clue what inimical is, and if they don't have their phone to Google it, I don't know where that's going to go. So those are things that are not changed. Those are carryovers from the old ordinance. Maybe they're de minimis to, to change at this point. Maybe you could throw them in with the mix and just change that word at the very least. Um, one last thing, drums. I know at a prior meeting, which I watched on APTV, someone brought up the issue of performances that are inherently annoying to some people, such as drumming. I don't mind listening to Inagata De Vida like once, maybe twice, but for three hours straight, if I'm on the beach, which I don't go to, but if I were, I think I would want that person to move within a half hour about 600 feet that way. So maybe certain types of activities are not inimical to the public experience down there, and you might want to exclude them entirely. Uh, drumming is fine, but incessant drumming, just I hear it on the 400 block of Fifth Avenue, and it annoys me to no end when it goes on hour after hour after hour. So I understand the arts, and I understand diversity, and uh, you know, uh, an arts and crafts zone, and all of this as well, but there's the other side of the coin. People are entitled to the quiet enjoyment of a natural resource, the beachfront at times. So there needs to be some balance, I think. Thank you. Thank you. According to Google definition, inimical means tending to obstruct or harm. Synonyms are harmful, injurious, detrimental, uh, damaging, hurtful, destructive. Yes, sir. Hello, Robert Francis. Uh, I had to, uh, I have a lot of comments after that uh, speaker that was in front of me. Um, if you don't like the drumming, sir, uh, uh, I, 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 address, address the ordinance. You two can take that conversation outside. Okay. Address okay. the ordinance, please. Thank you, Mayor. And your comments should be directed to the mayor council, not to any person in New York. Gotcha. Thank you, guys. I think you guys are doing a great job, especially uh, Deputy Mayor Quinn. You have listened to uh, all the performers of what we said, and uh, you took everything that we said into consideration, um, including with me, including the hours. So I want to thank you guys very much for actually listening. Um, <clears throat> I have no problem with anything in this ordinance whatsoever because you guys have been more than fair. And I want to go on record by saying that you guys have done a great job as far as uh, supporting our street performers and I want to thank all of you guys. So thank you very much. Uh, the 100 feet, if we get moved to ass, that's great, you know. It gives everybody a shot, like Deputy Quinn, uh, excuse me, Deputy Mayor Quinn was saying. Uh, and like I said, I want to thank you guys once again, everybody up there. Um, and especially listening to not shortening the hours, because that was really a hot issue with me. And uh, me and Deputy Mayor Quinn spoke about that intensively, and I want to thank you guys once again. Sure, so, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Hey, just do us a favor, and we appreciate your support. Support us. I'm sure all you street performers are talk to each other, so get the word out. This is a trial. If it works, it will happen again next year. If it doesn't work, it's not going to happen again next year. So be our ambassador to the rest of the street performers and help us make this work. Sure, and li like I said, I'll, I'll definitely tell you know the people that are, were not here tonight, the other performers, I, I, I will tell them that. And um, just keep supporting us because like me, this is how I make my living. I rely on this for the whole entire year. 
And so, and I appreciate it. Without Asbury, I'd be homeless. Thank you, and good luck. Thank you. And Tony, we should make sure that this ordinance goes to Tony Salerno, and then is is. I, I mean, I think it merits tomorrow. a discussion with the specialists, right? It'll be addressed tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. Great. Great. Hi, uh, Rita Moreno, Eighth Avenue. Uh, as usual, I like to follow the money. Is, did you increase the price? I increased the fee, Rita. I increased the fee. To how much? It was twenty. I increased it to fifty. Still a bargain. It, well, the only and then my only counter to you, Rita, is that I did research on all towns and what they charge, and I believe fifty was the highest as per Seaside Heights. I mean, don't quote me now. I did this research a, a month ago, but I went to whatever the highest was. Oh, okay, they're not as broke as we are the other towns. They may not agree, <laughs> huh? Uh, the other thing I wanted to say is, who's going to monitor the hundred feet? They can't. You don't even monitor the tables on the boardwalk yet correctly. I'm not so, sure that. Uh -huh. So, and listen, I'm what? not going to go too crazy about this. Uh -huh. We're requesting performers move a hundred feet. If they move ninety-seven feet. I don't think that's going to be an issue if they move a hundred and you know. If if you want to be technical uh, about it, you can take out your smartphone, plug up Google Earth, you put the ruler on there, you mark your spot, you measure it hundred feet, you move to that yeah, spot. Yeah, if that hundred if we feet need, if we have an issue, problem, then we'll tweak it next year. We can resolve I, it. I, don't, I think if you just tell them to move a pavilion down, they'll get the gist. I don't. I honestly think there's going to be two people all summer asked to move. Would be my mm -hmm. guess. I agree. I mean, but you know, you have all these rules and regulations, and nobody gets the real answers. Tables on the boardwalk, nobody measures them. And they, everybody's extending their business, and we're not getting the revenue. I mean, it's got to, you know, end. No? All right. Yeah. Any other public comments for Ordinance 2015 17? Second. All in favor? All right. All right. Motion to adopt Ordinance 2015-17. Move it. Second. Any comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Councilmember Kendall. Yes. Councilmember Werner. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Ordinance 2015-19, establishing restricted parking space for use by handicapped persons along Lake Avenue on city of, uh, in the city of Asbury Park and amending supplementing chapter 7-36 entitled Handicap Parking of Chapter 7 Traffic of the Revised General Ordinances in the City of Asbury Park, New Jersey. At this time, I'd like to uh, get a motion to open the meeting to the public. Move Second. Second. All in favor? Second. Aye. Aye. Is there any public comment regarding Ordinance 2015-19? Motion to close. Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Motion to adopt Ordinance 2015-19. Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Councilmember Warner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Ordinance 2015-20, establishing a 15-minute time limit for single parking space along Somerville Avenue, City of Asbury Park, New Jersey, amending and supplementing revised general ordinances <coughs> of the City of Asbury Park, Park accordingly. We can I have a motion to open this ordinance up to the public? Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any public comment for Ordinance 2015-20? Motion to close public hearing. Where is it on Summerfield? 516. On Summerfield Avenue be, be, between um, 516, 516 and 516. Rand. 516. 516 Summerfield. Southwest corner. So the description here, beginning at a point located 25 feet east of the southeast corner of Summerfield Ave and Emory, extending east on Summerfield Ave, measuring 20 feet in length. Oh, what's there? Uh, I think a bunch of stores. Yeah, a couple of businesses. There. And the problem is there's no metered parking there. Yeah. And there's the school. So the teachers would park there all day. There's no way to control parking there for the businesses. So we're responding to a business businesses requests to have a fifteen minute parking. Which makes sense in that spot because there's no metered parking. And there's no fifteen minute uh, space on that whole block. Right. So where are the teachers gonna park? So well, we're only spot. taking one space, Rita. Oh, one? Yeah. yeah, it's just one spot. All right. Just for those businesses. Any other public comment? Motion to close. Second. 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion to adopt ordinance 2015-20. Move it. Second. Council Member Clinton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Council Member Warner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Ordinance 2015-21, ordinance setting the salary compensation of employees of the City of Asbury Park who are members of the AFSCME Union. Motion to open the to public hearing. Move it. Second. All in favor? Any public comment regarding Ordinance 2015-21? Please state your name. Yes, uh, Lori Ross, R-O-S-S-S and Sam, former city employee, 374 Lauren Branch Avenue is my residential address. With regards to the salary ranges for the folks in this particular union, um, I don't know if you can ask with regards to are the ranges based on any qualifying factor of the individuals currently held in those positions or how are these ranges set? Because quite frankly, just because I'm a former employee with a certain level of qualifications, I will tell you that the salaries seem very, very high. Also, to that point, has there been an analysis on the salary ranges as reflected by the county ranges? Because these are even high for the county and potentially high for the state. Meaning that you have folks that are hired regardless of their qualifications, these salary ranges seem quite high. So in adopting this was again an analysis done on the ranges. Are they comparable? I mean, because these are, you know. Okay, so for example, um, well, this is the one I know pretty much. The Director of Community Development Program. The minimum is $28,000, and then the maximum in 2014 is $97,605. 2015 is $99,069. In 2016, it's $101,050. In 2017, it is one hundred and four thousand and eighty one dollars and I believe I could be wrong about this but I think the governor himself only gets about 165 I could be off but your ranges are astronomical so that's the first part of it what, what was the first number you, you well listen to this no, 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 no. it's 28,000 okay but, so, so they're also very low and that's what they are they're a salary range Depending on your qualifications, you could start someplace between 28 and whatever your number was, 97. Nobody in that position is making $97,000. Nobody in the majority of those positions are making the majority. But if you have a maximum amount, Mayor, maximum. you can, somebody could slip in and get that. And I do know with regards to that particular position, there is a civil service requirement, because this is civil service jobs, right? There's a civil service requirement of four years experience or a college degree. And you have somebody in that position now that's making, I believe, 80 plus without a college degree. And I will tell you that there are people in the private sector, the federal government sector, and the nonprofit sector that would say, hey, this is pay, pay dirt for me, combined with the fact that you have, I'm sure, a whole lot of residents in the city and in the county and the state, with a state that still has a high unemployment rate that would love the opportunity to apply for these jobs. So there are a couple of questions here. The first question is, number one, your salary ranges, why are they high? Number two, if your city professionals have done an analysis to determine how these job ranges compare to the county and the state, as well as the qualification question that I don't know if I can ask in this public hearing, how does the city determine the salary based on qualifications when according to that particular civil service title 
you have to have a college degree or four years experience, and the person in that position does not have either. Well, on that, you're straying from the ordinance. The ordinance right now is just setting salaries. It has nothing to do with a specific specific person, specific right. job title. It's setting salaries for job titles. So again, my question is, Mayor Moore, and it's really not you, I guess, possibly, I think it's Mr. Nuccio. Um, has there been, because the council is making decisions based on I guess information from the city manager and the professional staff. So again, I say, was there a comparison done? Because there's a lot of folks in this town that are unemployed. There's a lot of folks in this town that certainly have the qualifications, but the reality is it seems as though they're difficult to get these jobs. So was there an analysis done on these pay ranges? So let me just try to shed some light on that from my perspective. So if you look, I'm a teacher, and you can have a range of unions, and they have a range of salaries for the same position. So the question is not when it's in a collective bargaining agreement, the question is not as simple as here's the analysis, you're high or low. Because there's a history of negotiation that is built upon, and then you can't just, I mean, it's very uncommon to just scratch a contract and, and, and start, I mean, you, you've got people who are working up steps and have, so it's, it's not as simple as just saying, let's do an analysis and then we can start from scratch. There's past practice, there are, and somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, just speaking from my experience as a teacher, there are um, existing negotiations, prior negotiations and future negotiations that are all taken into account. It's not just the analysis that's well, determines it. Well, Councilman Werner, I was a former city employee. I was a member of the particular union in question. And I do understand negotiations. And I understand that in negotiations, if it was a matter of saving a job versus some concessions, and the fact that I don't speak for the governor for sure, but I will say that there's numerous fights that the governor has, perhaps because you're receiving the transitional aid, God willing, that perhaps what you did yesterday wouldn't be the same thing you did today. If you had some factual information to make a, you know, these decisions, or there's some basis in fact, that perhaps there would be some consideration on, hey, maybe we want to lower the range. Because you, guess what? The city can't afford it. The, the ranges are the ranges. And the, the percentage increases are well below what the state mandate is, which is no more than 2% a year. It was a five-year contract where the first year was zero, the second year, one and a half, third year, one and a half, fourth year 2%, fifth year five, 3%, which is 8% over five years, which is 1.6% if you average it out. So we're well underneath this 2% cap. And most municipalities didn't get 8%. So we, this, and again, this contract goes back two years. So it, it's a contract, we inherited, we finished negotiating on it. And I'm gonna tell you, since I've been here since 1980, being a former employee, it's the first time ever a council has gotten back more than just pay raises. We increased steps in guides. We took away some benefits. And that's the first time, because in the past, it's always been be in 1984, you, you would go a year without a raise, then all of a sudden you were wrapping up the raise, and back in those days you were getting sixes and sevens. But then everybody would forget about the language. So 1987, you do the same thing. Everybody would forget about the language. This time we did not forget about the language, and we did reduce some benefits, which will be a cost savings on all unions. We reduced benefits. And again, all unions got the 8%. Except that police got 10% because they gave back more as far as salaries on putting in more steps or with the police on the grants or else, and it was this win-win for the city. So the ranges are the ranges, but the increases are 8% over five years, 1.6. So then can I infer that there was no analysis on how these ranges compared to the county or the state 
But I'm not going to say that because the ranges are the ranges, and I'm not going to say that they were, an analysis wasn't done. So we don't know. A contract ago. Because so we, the, the ranges basically say the same. So we don't know. Um, I don't know if I can even ask this, but if you post additional jobs, because I have a lot of folks that come to the center about jobs, I would certainly love to get the job postings, Mr. Nuccio, so that I can disseminate it throughout the town as best I can so that these good jobs with good benefits and good ranges, um, some of the citizens can avail themselves of a potential prospective job. That's easy, and we'll, we'll definitely do that. And whenever we go out for any job, we first we post it in-house, and then it's promotional, which you're aware of. We have to, by the union contracts, promotional first. Then we advertise in the papers and everything, and it means we have to reach out to community, West Side communities. I mean, I can come every week to see right. about jobs. I have no problem with that. I and think post them. I, it, I mean, we do list them. They're on the bulletin board. We do put them in the senior center. We put them in the library. But we have no problem. We'll share them with you. Thank so, you. Thank you. Uh, Tracy Rogers, 922 Monroe. <clears throat> uh, question to the mayor. Uh, the ranges are the ranges, but I think the people and residents of Asbury should know that under your discretion, you can hire someone at that range. Am I right? Correct. Right now, not under MOU. Wait, wait, right, not under the MOU, which you, which okay. the city is under right now. But outside of that, they can. Let me just correct you one thing. Mayor and council under a former government does no hiring and firing except attorney and city clerk and everything. City manager does hire all hiring and firing. Okay, so and, he and, can, so and, he can, so he can hire correct. under that, correct. under that range. So right. right now, I think the people can understand that that range is capable of being accepted. Yes. And right now, what they're asking is that one that you look at changing those ranges, maybe in a negotiation with the contracts, even on give backs or anything else. Uh, outrageous range is an outrageous range. And I think 97,000 for a community cl uh, block uh, representative is outrageous for such a small town. And it could be utilized better in the community. Am I right? But, yes, but going back through all the years, anybody in that job title, going back to be it Hazel Samuels who was there for so many years, it was the same range, and she never made that type of money. So you're right. Could a city manager give somebody that type of salary? Then the city manager would have to answer the council. I think the council would bounce the city manager. So I mean, a range is a range, and should have they maybe been looked at better and maybe modified? I'm not going to disagree with you there, but until somebody starts making that money, they, it's moot to me. And has the city looked at making sure that most of the jobs being hired under certain ranges are being done by residents of the city first? We, we, we Making ordinance that uh, hire in the city of no, the, city, the city has no residency ordinance, which I wish we did. When I worked for the city, there was an ordinance. The past mayor and council did away with the ordinance. That goes back to Jerry's question before. And so, can we bring it back? Can we get some affirmative that we understand that we may need that to make sure people in this community are getting jobs? It's, it's something I want to look into, but it goes back to like what Jerry was saying before, like. How can I tell a hotel, you got to hire everybody that they have to live in Asbury Park when the mayor and council don't even do that? Exactly. That's something we have to address first. Exactly. Okay. We Thank should you. point out, though, right, even though we don't have a residency requirement right, under civil service, right, you're going to find is that preference goes to Asbury Park residents. Well, yeah, yeah I understand that, but, with a, but with, with a residency agreement, you know up front, so we don't have to fall back on that part. It just makes the council affirm that this is their practice and that's what they're looking forward to doing. Uh, I just want to say uh, one thing. People work a lifetime and don't make $90,000. These jobs aren't that hard. They're not hard at all. And half of the people at work here don't even answer the telephone. Call up, you get every department, you get the machine. So, I mean, there's a lot of things that are wrong with the salary ordinance. I don't think you should pass it tonight. And the other thing is, John, you hold the checkbook. 
I don't think the city manager does. You're the one that votes on the budget. He doesn't vote on it. So you have a lot to say about this, even though we do have a manager. You could stop this, you could change it, you can do anything you want with it. And I think 8% in five years is a lot of money today. I mean, you're predicting a five-year thing here. And it's not even five years, is it? Yes, it's a five-year contract. Five-year contract. I mean, it's outrageous. I mean, just take one example. Last year, the girl I was supposed to collect the mercantile license didn't do it. She didn't get fired. She's going to get a raise. That's not fair. The taxpayers can't afford this. They really can't. And you keep saying the taxes are going up. I don't know how much more they could go up. Because, you know, we don't have that many benefits coming to the taxpayer in this town. I have potholes in front of my house that are outrageous. Rita, I don't think anybody would argue with you that we need to do some things better in the city. That's not what we're discussing here. We're simply discussing money. Well, we're discussing money. A lot of money. Right. But that and does plus not... Plus 25% benefits that they get. They better start paying like 35% for health care. And I didn't even talk about the bill resolution with $22,000 going out to employees for their health care besides what's in the budget. It's not fair. It really isn't. Something's got to be done about it. Mary Valino, uh, Webb Street. Um, I'm an HR professional for about 25 years, and as I sit here and listen to minimum and maximum, there's a component missing, which is the midpoint. And there are a number of organizations out there, like Mercer, that will do a salary study. It's relatively inexpensive to do, and it will hold true to similar size municipalities. So maybe next go around, we might want to think about that. And then in conjunction, uh, organizations typically hire below the minimum in the midpoint range, and then there are steps similar to Joe, which you speak about in respect as you better yourself and you enhance your skills. So maybe the council just takes that into <coughs> consideration for the next go around uh, to do an analysis, and then you'll have a pretty good cure about your um, midpoints and things like that that maybe would be helpful and quell a little bit of the angst amongst the community. And thank you all for what you do. I want to just add, and I didn't get up earlier, it is very nice to see you all at our community uh, services, such as the Memorial Day on the Avenue this past week, and it's uh, really cool to be part of Asbury. Thanks. Thank you. Motion to close. Second. All favor? <laughs> Motion to adopt ordinance 2015-21. Move it. Second. Any comments or discussion? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Stay. Councilmember Warner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Ordinance 2015-22, an ordinance setting the salary and compensation of employees of the City of Asbury Park who are members of the IFPTE Union Local 196. I have a motion to open the uh, ordinance to the public. Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any public comment on Ordinance 2015-22? Okay. Motion to close public. We should have done this one first because there's no ranges, it's steps. <laughs> motion to close. Second. All in favor? Aye. Motion to adopt ordinance 2015-22. Move it. Second. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Councilmember Warner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Ordinance 2015-23, an ordinance setting the salary and compensation of non-union employees of the City of Asbury Park. Motion to open the uh, ordinance to the public. Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any public comments on ordinance 2015-23? Motion to close. Move to close. Second. All in favor? Aye. Motion to adopt ordinance 2015-23. Move it. Second. 
just have a comment. Okay. So just on all of this, I think the idea of putting the uh, bullseye on the back of a public worker in whatever sector, whatever sector is a bit misguided. So if we just look at, and I was going to talk about this when we did transitional aid, if you look at our, the reason that we were, our Moody's bumped us, and it was related to the state's inability to pay the pension system, right? So I'll give Christie credit in that he was the first to put, or since the last four, <coughs> four predecessors, he put more money into the system. But at the same time, there's money that through his diversification of the assets, we have, you know, reports of upwards of close to half a million, half a billion dollars, like $400 million that was spent towards management fees, spent towards um, just a variety of things associated with the management. So when we're, when we're looking at where some of our money is going, I think it's important to look at that level. And the public worker has been made in the press and the, the bully pulpit, the target. It's not the public worker. It's some of the pieces that have been moved around up at the top levels of our government that have put us in this situation. So I just, I just want to make that, make that point because I think it's lost at times. Any further comments? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Councilmember Warner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Ordinance 2015-24, an ordinance authorizing the City of Asbury Park to convey a temporary easement of the property located at Block 3702, Lot 1, to the State of New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection and to execute necessary documents in connection therewith in order to facilitate the proposed Deal Lake dredging project. Motion to open the ordinance to the public. Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any public comment regarding Ordinance 2015-24? Motion to close. Move it. Move it. All in favor? Aye. <laughs> Next. Motion to adopt Ordinance 2015-24. Move it. Second. Any comments or questions? I wanted one thing to say. I thought. I think you want. Okay. okay, I thought all new ordinances that pertain to lot and block are going to have now addresses on them. This isn't new. There, there really is no address. It's the piece of land right next to the flume, the, where the flume okay. is. It's a okay. grass strip right there. There is no address. Okay, right. that's all right. Okay. Roll call. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Councilmember Warner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Ordinance 2015-25, an ordinance amending and supplementing Chapter 7 traffic of the revised general ordinances of the City of Asbury Park, New Jersey. Motion to open the ordinance to the public. Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any public comment regarding Ordinance 2015-25? What is that about? Fred, do you want to do a little? This uh, ordinance was addressed by Councilman Warner at our last work session two weeks ago, and it's basically uh, an interim measure uh, for the city to amend some of the parking regulations while we um, undertake the review of the Desmond report and consider uh, more comprehensive parking uh, regulation provisions. Um, there, there's a number of items that are in this ordinance that were previously addressed during the prior work session two weeks ago. I don't know if you want to go through each one individually. I think they already have been part of work session discussions and were recommendations made by the Parking Advisory Committee. No, that's good. Go. State yes. your name, please, for the record. Okay, Warner Baumgartner, Fifth Avenue. Uh, I'm just curious, how many uh, spaces did we end up with in the municipal lot here, right next to us? Oh, I want to say sure. the same as before. What that was, I said. No, we have more. No, no we have got we had more. A couple, not between, a lot, but. 18? No, I thought it was between eight and sixteen. Sixteen. Okay. Number one. I'm hearing a lot. Okay, we got a lot of spaces. Uh, approximately 16 were. We're added additional. We're to what we have. More were added. Okay, you don't have a total of. A little over 100. 
Okay. Um, the designated spaces for council, manager, et cetera, are they going to be included yes. in the paid parking? Yes. Off hours? Great. Um, there are some spaces I know that are used by the police department. I assume those are going to be reserved for the police department only? Well, they'll, they'll be numbered, but the police will have an ID on the, the sticker from finance on the back of the car so a cop doesn't give another cop a ticket. But if they don't have a because it's registered right now as permit parking, so every city employee is supposed to have a permit. I think he's talking about. Uh, oh, oh, on the, on, oh, behind the headquarters? Yeah. That's, on the, that's, that's, still that's, that's still police. That's still police. The extreme south end yeah. is still reserved for police business only. And the fence well, is going to go up around it. Okay, all right. And then about the, uh, the transportation center, is that being uh, restriped and uh, changed as far as the parking configuration also? Down the road. That will be. Okay, down the road. So it, it's in the ordinance. And it's just a question, do we do it this year or six months from now? We ordered one machine for City Hall parking lot. I don't believe we ordered a machine for that, right? Oh, we didn't. Well, we ordered one know. machine. We ordered one machine. And we're looking into, should that be, it's still going back to the parking committee, which I think is meeting Thursday. Should that be like Matawan, Little Silver, should that be like train commuter first and permit and then pay parking so that's still in the works okay it needs to be fine-tuned correct okay and then the third thing which is not mentioned at all is the the west side lot here next to the tracks is that in the queue in the that's, process that's in the future yeah so what we tried to do is pick the low-hanging fruit for right. this we sure. wanted to get it done before the summer season hits pick the things that seem to be kind of no-brainers let's I'm not saying they are no-brainers <laughs> we'll see how it goes but the low-hanging fruit and then all those things are on the discussion for the change that will come okay. in, into effect so there's a sequence of events here municipal lot transportation lot right. the uh, the west of the tracks lot and we're moving in the direction of having managed parking for all the municipal spaces and uh, a new residential permitting process right the I whole thing a whole overall we that. just can't do it all at once okay great now one thing i see omitted that hasn't been discussed much is resident parking only areas there are several areas where people just don't have off-street parking because their property doesn't accommodate it and typically in other areas uh, other municipalities there are spaces set aside for residents only with a permit is that on the agenda for the future also it is right so there's been some just very preliminary discussions like if you move one block out of the meter parking in the waterfront everybody parks there in the summer because the beach is crowded and it's almost impossible to find a spot there so i think joe had raised in hoboken lots of places like that have half of the street is resident only the other half is open for public parking so that's we haven't the parking committee has barely even opened that discussion but it is on our radar and it's something that we'll be dealing with for the okay great because that kind of ties process. in with the reconstruction of berg that we discussed earlier if berg continue if the infrastructure projects continue and berg is reconfigured going south from fifth um it will be in fact wider than it is now curb to curb and there's an opportunity to accommodate those residents there that have no off-street parking at all um so i'm glad that people are thinking about these things thank you no, well you know what it's all right forget it <laughs> forget it forget it i was going to bring up the exam and what we have there but forget it i'm good any other public comment regarding ordinance 2015-25 motion to close move it second. second all in favor Aye. motion to adopt ordinance 2015-25 move it second council member clayton yes council member kendall yes council member warner yes deputy mayor quinn yes mayor moore yes motion to adjourn move it move it Second. <laughs> All in favor? All right. We're adjourned.